The first Valorant Major of 2022 just concluded, and this was the first major event since Chamber was introduced into the game. I spent several hours VOD reviewing the top Chamber players, specifically Optic Ye, throughout all of Masters 1, so you guys can have a higher success rate with Chamber in your ranked games. In Masters 1 Reykjavik, Chamber had a 44% pick rate across all maps, which was the fourth highest agent pick rate behind only Jet at 65%, Sova at 49% and Viper at 46%. As we break down the maps, Chamber had a 100% pick rate on Breeze, an 81% pick rate on Fracture, a 59% pick rate on Icebox, a 42% pick rate on Bind, a 33% pick rate on Haven, a 25% pick rate on Ascent, and a 15% pick rate on Split. But what's even more interesting about Chamber's pick rate is that he's the only agent in all of Valorant without a 0% pick rate on at least one map. Even the three agents that had an overall higher pick rate, Jet, Sova, and Viper, all had maps where their pick rate was 1%. Bind for Jet, Split, and Fracture for Sova, and Ascent and Haven for Viper. So now that we know where Chamber is most useful, let's talk about how pros actually use Chamber's utility and position themselves. We'll start where Chamber is at his best, on defense. Chamber isn't as complicated as an agent like Ko or Sova because those agents rely a lot more on timings than anything else. But since Chamber's utility is typically set up in the pre-round, it's a lot easier to cover how pros actually use him. The major things that we'll cover on the defense side are where Chamber places his trips, where he places his teleporters and how he plays off of them, and how good Chamber is at retaining map control. If we start with trip placement, it's super common to place these at the entrances of major choke points that lead to a site. This is great because if the trip doesn't get broken, then this one piece of utility can completely slow down a rush that's going onto a site. But one thing that I noticed that Optic Ye did, especially on the map Bind, is that he often put trips on both sites. Now you're probably asking ZK, how did he have time to place trips on both sites during the pre-round? And the answer is with his teleport. Porters. If you look at the map from this clip, you can see that Ye places a TP down in his spawn, runs over to B site in Hookah to place a trip, and places another teleporter down right after he places the trip. From there, he TPs back to the original teleporter that he placed in spawn and makes his way over to the A site where he places his second trip in the A short push. I love this clever use of chamber utility. Normally, if you teleport during the round, you have a 20 second cooldown, but if you use your teleporters in the pre-round, you only get a three second cooldown, which can help you set up your trips in unique positions and also teleport into very unique off angles. Now, one thing that I need to address because I see it so commonly in my ranked games are when these chamber players use their teleporters to set them up in between two sites. This is very common to see on bind with the cubby on B site and then U-Haul on A site. In all of the matches that I watched throughout VCT, I only saw Ye do this a few select times. And in all of these instances, Ye was doing this on eco rounds. Eco rounds tend to play out a lot faster than buy rounds and the attacking team is most likely to do a fast hit and explode out to a site. So TPing between the two sites can be useful in this instance. But never once did I see Ye do this when the attacking team had a full buy. And the reason for this is because Chamber is so good at retaining map control on the defensive side. If we look at this trip that Ye places in the cubby toward B long, it allows him to peek long with an operator and hold that entire part of the map without any consequence. And because the teleporter is placed in the cubby that's in the pocket on the actual site, there's no chance that the enemy breaks this so he can't teleport out. So unless he gets completely flushed out by utility, Ye is able to hold this part of the map really, really effectively. I want to make it clear, your job as chamber on defense is to take very aggressive angles because you can get away with it with your teleporters. By taking these aggressive angles, you can get an early pick with absolutely no punishment because the enemy team can't trade you out. Now that Jet has been nerfed, there's basically no other agent in the game that can do this as carelessly as chamber can. Another vitally important aspect of playing chamber is being confident in your ability to use the operator. Opping is an extremely important part of Valorant, and again, going back to why chamber's TPs are so good, Chamber can play off angles with this weapon with absolutely no consequence since he can always TP out. You can still be effective on Chamber without using the Operator, but Chamber is truly at his best with a player that's confident in doing so. Not one team that I saw play Chamber in all of VCT had a player that was scared to use the op while on this agent. So again, in order to get the most out of Chamber, you should be confident in your op ability. We'll end the defensive side of things with this insane play by Ye. If you look at the minimap, he has an aggressive TP set up in Hookah, and his fallback for this teleporter is inside of B site. This aggressive hookah TP allows him to peek all the way into market, and when he sees nothing initially, look at the map control that he's able to take. He pushes all the way up into this cubby, and because there's no chamber on the enemy team, he knows that there's not a trip there waiting for him. When the Sova pops his ult from short, he and his teammate push, 
And look at the incredible 3K that's taken by the map control that Chamber allows you to take. Going back to what I said earlier, if you're a Chamber that's sitting back on site, this would never be possible. This was made happen because of Ye's aggressive peek out of Hookah originally and spotting absolutely nobody toward the B side of the map. Now let's cover how pro players play Chamber on attack. Now right out of the gate, I wanna cover something that I hear so much in my ranked games, and that's people saying that Chamber is a duelist. Now I agree that Chamber is very similar to the pre-nerf Jet in the way that he can be played on the defensive side of things. He can take those very aggressive angles and TP out without getting traded out, just like Jet could dash. But on offense, to say that Chamber's a duelist couldn't be further from the truth. You have to remember that Jet's job is to entry and create space onto site, but Chamber can't do that because you have to set his teleporters up in the pre-round. And again, on attack, that's not happening. So after watching VODs of Ye and the way he plays on attack, it was very common to see him play towards the middle or even back of the pack to watch his duelists and initiators go in first and then trade them out. Where Ye did start to use his teleporters though was once the team already had the spike down and they were in a post plant position. He would place a teleporter right at the entrance of A short. And once his team took the site and planted the spike, he would place another TP inside of U-Haul to retain U-Haul control and try to get a pick and then TP out. So guys, when you're playing chamber on attack, your job isn't to entry. You are literally a sentinel, but once your team has the spike down, then you can get away with playing those very uncommon off angles. As we talk about attacking with chamber, it's vital that we cover the trip placement that pros use so they don't get flanked. And even in the event that they do get flanked, you're gonna be alert of it. What I like that Ye did with Chamber is that he would not only place a common trip for flank, but also another trip that covers a lot of map control. Especially on a map like Bind, there are four different paths to site. So even when your team is sitting in a default and waiting for the defensive team to push, it's very likely that you're gonna to have to give one of those four lanes up. So if we look at what Ye did on pistol round here, he bought two trips and five chamber bullets. He puts the first trip in the very common market flank spot and the second trip outside of showers. Going back to what I said about defaulting, Optic did this in their very first attacking pistol round. You can see Finesse waiting for the A short push and using his lurking viper wall to make the defending team weary of an A short push. And the rest of the four players are all defaulted toward Hookah and B long. That's why I like the placement of this showers trip so much. Because there's nobody there watching, they have a trip that will alert them in case the defending team does decide to take that map control. Throughout the match, you would see Ye changing up his trip position based off of Optic's attacking plans during the given round. You can see in this round, they wanted to default more toward the A side of the map, and Ye decides to put a trip toward the B side of Market, and also one all the way toward the Fountain in B Long. Again, this alerts them if the defending team takes that part of the map so Optic can play reactively on it and not allow them to get all the way into their spawn. There's only one thing left for us to talk about with Chamber's utility, and that's his ultimate or his operator. There were three instances where Chamber players would typically pull out their ult. One of them being on save rounds because obviously the team can't fully buy, but going into a round with a chamber op can always turn things around and lead to a big thrifty. The other common time to see a chamber op was toward the very end of the half, usually in the last round if the team had a full buy. Why not pop the ultimate on top of the rifle that you already have? It only adds another weapon to your arsenal, and the last thing you want to do is waste an ultimate in Valorant. And the third instance where we would see a chamber player pop his ult was when the team planned on buying for one round, but one player on the team couldn't afford a rifle. In this in this instance, the chamber can buy that poor player a rifle and just play around his ultimate. The first major tournament with chamber in it was a major success, and I really think chamber brings a lot of excitement to the game. What do you guys think about chamber? And what do you guys think of this review? Did I leave anything out? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications, and check out one of these other awesome videos on our channel.